Monday. Going live this morning for the Monday morning style session. Hopefully everything cooperates with me. Comment and let me know where you're watching me from. I will answer questions and comments at the end of this video just so that the video is clean and everyone can kind of watch it um, together. Okay, so hello, welcome to this week's Monday Morning Style Session. Very excited to be talking to you about travel. Um, we're all, many of you are traveling already for spring. We're all, you know, summer is coming and all of the summer trips that come up. And so I wanted to show you how I, and kind of teach you how I pack for clients and how I pack for myself because I am a reluctant carry-on traveler now. When did we go from like taking trunks and actual closets with us on trips to having to be pack our clothes in like a shoebox size bag and that's all we could take and being crammed into like the tiniest spots on airplanes and all of that. So I know that traveling with a carry-on is the direction that many people are going in. Many of you are just taking carry-ons on, you know, any kind of a shorter trip. And so I wanted to give you a strategy for when you when you want to pack a carry-on or if you just want to pack smart and you want to pack strategically, how you can do that without sacrificing style. Now, those of you who have hair like me know that we will never be able to pack three ounces of hair product and have that work for an entire trip. That is just never going to be a thing. Um, so um, clothes, however, though, are, are something that we can be really strategic about and we can minimize the number of items that we bring with us on a trip without minimizing our style. And so that's the goal when I have a you know, help a client travel or help a client pack. I've helped a client pack for um, a trip around the world with three kids in one suitcase, and they were gone for many months. So, um, so welcome if you're joining me live. But I wanted to kind of talk you step by step through the process that I use to help a client pack. Now, the first thing that you want to do when you're looking at your trip, obviously, you're, you know, you're going to look at all the factors. You're going to look at your itinerary. You want a day by day itinerary, whether it's that's, you know, very well thought out and very planned or whether it's kind of a loosey goosey itinerary, which is what we tend to go with. You want an idea of what the things are that you're going to be doing on the trip and you want to identify the outliers. You want, want to identify the outliers. Like, is there an occasion on this trip when you're going to have to dress up more than the rest of the trip? And is there an occasion on the trip when you're going to have to dress down more than the rest of the trip? the trip. So I've covered this a little bit in the past, so I'm not going to get into that in, in that much detail, but she really want to start with, with your itinerary. Um, but then when you're looking at, okay, I know the climate, I know kind of what we're going to be doing. You're going to start with an item in your closet that, or an item that you want, you want to pack that you've absolutely decided this is an item that's coming with me. I, I really, really want to pack this item. I really want to pack this item. I'm excited about wearing this dress. I'm excited about wearing this outfit. This is the non-negotiable piece or outfit for me on this trip. So you start with one inspiration piece that you're going to build your wardrobe around. Um, because the idea of traveling in style, but traveling also efficiently and not taking a ton of stuff is to have everything go with everything else. But but to create really stylish combinations so that you're not bored and you don't feel frumpy or blech or whatever when you're on your trip, right? You want to feel stylish. You want to feel beautiful because you're going to different places and you're doing different things, but you also want to not take your entire closet. So you start with that inspiration piece or inspiration outfit um, because that is going to be the basis of your cluster. Um, and you're going to use the colors that appear in that piece as the basis of your cluster. So, for example, if your inspiration piece is um, or your starting piece is a black dress, then you're like, OK, well, there will definitely be black in my cluster then, because, the, you know, one of the main pieces, the piece that I'm building this cluster around is black. If it's a patterned piece, then you have more options because you can pull colors from that pattern to build your cluster around. So that's the first step. You're going to start with that inspiration piece. You're going to start with that starter piece that is the non-negotiable that you absolutely 100% want to take with you on your trip. Okay. The second thing is you're going to start, 
you're going to create a cluster around that piece. Now, those of you who don't know, my cluster concept is three tops, two bottoms, and a jacket or a completer piece of some kind, and then dresses as needed and as space permits, right? So for spring, summer, I always include a dress or two or 12, again, as space permits, and or a jumpsuit, right? If you're not a dress person. So, but you're going to start with the three tops, two bottoms, and a jacket. And so you're going to ask yourself, like, what box in that cluster does this piece check? If you chose a top as the, as the item that you want, absolutely want to take with you, and it's a blouse or whatever, then you've checked one of the boxes for a top. So three tops, two bottoms, and a jacket. What Pete, what role does that one starter piece fill? Or is it a dress? And a dress can really kind of sit outside of your cluster because a dress is something that is a one and done piece and doesn't necessarily need to go, needs to go with the accessories in your cluster, but it doesn't need to go with the other items in your cluster. Okay, so you're going to start by creating that cluster. Now, when you're creating a cluster, three tops, two bottoms, and a jacket, a rule, a good rule of thumb is, especially if you're a beginner, you want to keep pattern, interest, statement, lots of color, that kind of detail to one category in your cluster. So either the tops, the bottoms, or the jacket can be patterned, interesting, or colorful. The rest should be neutral and solid. So for many of you, that will mean picking three interesting, fun tops, two neutral bottoms, and a jacket. An easy, easy starter, if, you, if you're if you going on a casual trip, for example, is you can pack a pair of dark neutral bottoms, you can pack a pair of jeans, you can pack three pretty blouses, and you can pack a casual jacket, like a utility jacket, or even a denim jacket, or um, it could be a structured cardigan that looks good over all the pieces. So you can really, really keep it as simple, or you can make it as next level as you want. But this concept works for everybody all the time. A cluster will take you through one week of a trip. If you, if you pick the cluster properly and you add a dress or a jumpsuit, a cluster will take you through a one week long trip. Yes, that means I am actually suggesting that you can actually get through one week with six to seven items of clothing, plus obviously accessories. Six to seven items of clothing can get you through a week in style if you're strategic about it. I've done this over and over and over again with clients. Now, I'm not saying that you only have to take six to seven pieces, but I'm saying that you can take six to seven pieces and get through a trip in a stylish way. It's possible, it works. Um, and like I said, I've done it over and over and over again. I have a couple of clients now that are going from a warmer South or Western places to New York, um, very different you know, climate, very different setting. And they are going from, you know, one place to another with, you know, half a dozen pieces and you can do it too. You can do it too. And they've got all sorts of things to do, all sorts of fun and um, dressier items on their itineraries. And they're still able to travel with just half a dozen items. It really is a, a game changer when you, if, if you lean into this. Now, you can add as you know an, an, an additional cluster if you want if you have room for an additional cluster and that will give you more options but just know that you can actually travel with a single cluster and look beautiful and stylish and be ready for anything on your trip so you want to be really strategic again pay attention to what the outliers are and um and then build your cluster around your itinerary, around a, a focused color palette and around the climate that you're going to. And you will, you will be able to look beautiful and stylish everywhere you go for that week. Again, if you're adding more pieces, you're going to add a second cluster. The second cluster needs to go with your first cluster. If the second cluster goes with your first cluster, you're going to have something like 900,000 outfit possibilities, and you will definitely be stylish and prepared for anything on your trip. So if you're a minimalist, go for the six pieces. If you're more of a maximalist, then you're going to want to do two clusters for a week um, to give you the variety and the fun and the options that you may be you know, looking for. But my general rule of thumb, one cluster, one week, two clusters, two weeks, okay? Again, you can pack as much or as little as you have time for, or room for. 
Okay, next, um, you've, you've created your cluster. The next step is to choose a travel outfit. Now, this is something I've, I've recently changed. I've been choosing a travel outfit that sits outside of my cluster. My travel outfit is not part of the cluster. First of all, I usually feel really icky after a long trip, especially a transatlantic flight, and I don't want to rewear that outfit. Um, you know, at least I don't want to rewear it on my trip. It's just something that that looks different than the pieces that I'm planning to wear on the trip. For example, this summer, I'm going on a long weekend trip to Boston with my younger daughter. And so I'm going to wear my Lily Silk Navy, um, like two piece, very chic lounge set on the flight. And I'm going to pack very different clothes to actually wear in Boston. So my cluster is going to sit outside of my travel outfit. So you pack a travel outfit that you can wear there and back. I really like the linen two-piece sets. If you want to, if you want one that you can actually wear on your trip as well, the linen two-piece sets that are everywhere right now are so polished and so beautiful and are great for, yes, they get a little rumpled. That's part of the appeal of linen, but they're great for um, travel, like linen pants and a shirt. You can absolutely travel in them. Um, I do love that look. And then you can, they dry quickly. You can wash them when you get there and you can wear them on the way back as well. Um, but I really like having a travel outfit that, that sits outside of my cluster. So that's going to be your, your additional outfit. Um, and then you're going to add three pairs of shoes. So it's always the rule of threes for me with shoes. And you want a pair of shoes that you could walk around in and do all the sightseeing in. So I would, re may I recommend a pair of fashion sneakers? You want a pair of flat sandals and then you want a dressier pair of shoes, like a, a heel of some sort or whatever your dressier shoe level is. It can be an espadrille, it can be a mule, it can be a little pump, it can be a kitten heel, it can be a slingback. Depending on your trip, you're going to pick a dressier pair of shoes, a more casual pair of shoes, and a walking shoe. Those are the three categories you want to check. Dressy, casual, walking. For walking, like I said, always recommend a fashion sneaker. Um, they are, they go with your outfits and they're, they're really, really walkable. A fashion sneaker is different than an athletic sneaker. It's, this isn't like a, a, a chunky Nike that, um, that you work out in. This is like a streamlined white or black or off white, like some kind of a neutral sneaker that works as well with dresses as it does with casual outfits. So you know, those are the three shoes that you're going to take with you. You're going to wear the bulkier shoe. Most of the time in the spring and summer, that's going to be your fashion sneaker. So you're going to wear your sneaker onto the, the plane because that will save you room in your luggage. And maybe you'll be able to sneak in another pair of sandals and break my rule and do a rule of fours instead of a rule of threes. But you want at least three pairs of shoes on your trip, right? So you're looking at six to seven pieces um, really seven pieces if you add the dress and the, or the jumpsuit, um, as, as your minimal capsule wardrobe, your cluster for your trip, add three pairs of shoes because that's going to really change how your outfits look. And then of course, you know, you're going to add your accessories, your um, undergarments, your, you know, maybe PJs or something to lounge around the hotel in. You're going to add all of those, you know, extra pieces. You're going to add a bathing suit that will sit outside of that um, cluster. But you're going to add all of those extra pieces and, and, and then your luggage space does fill up quickly, right? After you add all of the extras, you add the accessories, you add the toiletries, um, your, your luggage space does fill up if you're just taking a carry on. So you want to be as strategic as possible with the extra items that you take. And that's why the rule of threes for shoes is really um, a, a good rule of thumb when packing and then that cluster concept. So that is it. Just if you are really strategic, like I said, and you're a minimalist, you can go for a week with six to seven items. If you're a maximalist, make it 12 to 14 items and you can get through a week in style, giving yourself options, giving yourself outfits, giving yourself um, opportunities to wear really beautiful clothes that maybe you're not reaching for as often in your everyday casual life. Like an, a, a trip is an opportunity to step into another, another climate, another culture, another um, lifestyle for a week and celebrate that experience by packing beautiful clothes 
beautiful clothes that really make you feel special on your trip. I'm not saying that you need to pack three t-shirts and two pairs of shorts unless you're going on a very casual like hiking trip or whatever. Saying you can pack your beautiful clothes. These can all be beautiful, amazing, fabulous clothes and you just take fewer of them. If you're if you're um, packing in a carry-on, as many of us are kind of being forced to do in 2024 due to, you know, a variety of reasons, right? Um, okay, so let me know if you've got any questions. I'm going to hop in and see if anyone, um, thank you, thank you. Hi, Melina. Um, thank you so much. Okay, if anybody has any questions, definitely share them in the comments um, below, and I will answer the questions after this video is done. Trying to keep these short and sweet and give you some information to get started. Now, I do have a closet that's linked as well as the reverse closet edit and wardrobe building bootcamp, which is kicking off today. It's not too late to join. So those are both linked here. And tomorrow, I've got a video where I'm showing you a beautiful, elegant, polished, and very feminine cluster from Goelia. And then on Friday, Friday, I have my travel clusters video. So I'm going to show you pre-made clusters for cruise, for Europe, for cities, for casual. Like I'm going to show you a cluster for every type of trip on in Friday's video. It was supposed to run last Friday. Due to uh, technology problems, it will be running this Friday. So I've got two great videos this week that are really going to help you work through the process of creating clusters for travel, for the trips that you're actually taking this season, and then also clusters to update your spring and summer wardrobe. I'm telling you, I, I can't say this enough. If you want to update your wardrobe for spring and summer and you want to do it in an affordable and streamlined and um, intentional way, you want to use a cluster for that. Your Egypt trip is 16 days. You have lots of stuff set up, and now you're going to look at them in light of a two-cluster plan. Absolutely. Linda, I traveled to Egypt with two clusters. It absolutely worked, and um, I felt ready for everything. I felt like I was able to dress up on the Nile cruise that we took and to the nicer dinners, and I felt like I was able to dress appropriately but casually for sightseeing at places like Luxor and Egypt. I know you're going to have an amazing time. Uh, Luxor and the pyramids, sorry. I know you're going to have an amazing time on your trip. Your trip to Australia is in five weeks. Okay, perfect. So start putting these clusters together. Share them with me in the Facebook group and on social media. I want to see them and I can give you feedback on your clusters. This is the power of planning, right? This is the power of planning and not throwing things in th the morning of a trip like my husband does. <laughs> Uh, my husband likes to pack at the very, very last minute. Um, he likes to pack himself. He likes to pack at the very last minute. Fortunately, he usually has what he needs. But if you want to, to look and feel your best and be ready for anything on a trip, you want to use the cluster and you want to share them with us so that we can give you feedback. I can give you feedback on them um, on, you know, in the Facebook groups, like I said, in social media. Uh, you're going on a 50 foot catamaran. Oh my gosh, you might want to look at my cruising cluster or beachy cluster. Um, that's going to be amazing. Um, okay, you guys, love you guys. Um, it was so, so good hanging out with you this morning. Definitely let me know any of your travel and style questions, cluster questions in the comments, and I will get to them later. Bye.